But to start off uh, with, you know, something that we can make fun about, that we can make jokes about, that we can poke fun at, uh, politics and politicians. For those of you who are new to the channel, uh, I am a proudly failed federal political candidate. I ran for the People's Party of Canada, which is one of the PPC liberals, New Democrat, uh, what's the other one there? Conservative. You got the Green Party, you got the Marxist, you got the marijuana. So let's say it's one of eight uh, or maybe 10 officially recognized federal parties in Canada. Maybe there's a lot more. I have no idea. I ran for the People's Party of Canada, not because I considered myself to be conservative by any means. I don't. Uh, nor did I run for them because I consider myself to be on the conservative or right side of politics. I, let me take that back. I consider myself to be on the right side of politics, but not the political right. I ran for the PPC because I had no other choice. I said at the time I would run for the country before I ran from the country, because if I ever leave Canada, because Canada has left me, I will have fought and made an attempt to change the political landscape here before saying I'm, I'm, I'm fleeing the political landscape here. Who's calling me here? Oh, Nate Brody's calling me. It's too late. Nate, I'm live. I'll call you later. Uh, I had a question about Section 230 immunity clarification, which we'll get to in a second. So I ran for the People's Party of Canada, and boy, howdy, did I lose in my district, uh, which went 53% to the Liberals. 53% of Westmount NDG, Notre Dame de Grasse, voted Liberal. And the Liberal candidate in my riding was Mark Garneau. You know what? Before we even get there, I think the lead... <laughs> I think the lady doth protest too much. Remove the word not and small it was me. Well, we'll get there, but this is also going to come up in my first subject. First things first, Super Chats, YouTube takes 30%. If you don't like that, uh, I'm simultaneously streaming on Rumble. Rumble has Rumble Rants. They take 20%. You can feel better supporting the company. More goes to the creator, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'll do my best to get to all the Super Chats. If I don't, and you're going to be miffed, don't give the Super Chat. It's to support, and I generally appreci genuinely appreciate it. You can also support us on Viva Barnes Law. Dot locals .com. Back to the subject at hand, and then we're going to get to the me think he doth protesteth too much. So I ran for the, the People's Party of Canada. Lost, but how, in my district. But I got three times more votes than the PPC did in this riding last time around in 2018, although the PPC basically tripled their votes in pretty much every riding across Canada. So it was a rising tide and not uh, an anomaly that is attributable to, attributable to my candidacy. I ran against Mark Garneau. Mark Garneau, for those of you who don't know, was the Minister of Transport, I believe at one time, became the Minister of Foreign Affairs, got re-elected, and then was promptly shuffled out of that position, replaced by Melanie Joly. And uh, there's a discussion of whether or not he's going to be uh, gifted an ambassadorship to France. So I ran against Mark Garneau. And my Twitter feed is a little sassier than um maybe one might think of me by watching youtube videos it's sassy for one of two reasons first of all everything gets read with snark and sass on twitter even lighthearted jokes which is going to get to the punchline of this idiocy uh but also i've i've kind of lost my i've lost my patience and i will call corrupt psychopathic politicians corrupt psychopathic politicians when they are behaving like corrupt psychopathic politicians so uh, I was tweeting rather, you know, uh, snarkily at Garno in the context of the election when we were running for office together. Garno at the time was Minister of Foreign Affairs. At the time, we were having that rather, uh, is debacleus a word? We were having that debacle of a withdrawal from Afghanistan where countless and unnumbered Canadians were left stranded in Afghanistan after, under the bumbling incompetency of Biden and Trudeau, Afghanistan war came to an end with great cataclysmic uh, consequences, but it came to an end, at least, you know, Biden pulled out the military in the dead of night, and who could have seen that going badly? So we had unnumbered, uh, unspecified amounts of Canadians still stranded in Afghanistan, and I was tweeting regularly to Garno, how many Canadians are left in Afghanistan? How many Canadians are left in Afghanistan? How many Canadians are left in Afghanistan? While he's out on the campaign trail tweeting, you know, images of whatever, which is fair game. But I never once got a response from Garneau on that question. I never once got a response from Mark Garneau 
on any tweet that I have ever made tagging Mark Garneau, asking Mark Garneau something, including Mark Garneau in the discussion, not once until this week. And I didn't even notice it because my notifications aren't turned on. I just happened to have found it. But what tweet, what tweet finally, finally got the attention of, oh no, oh yeah, I had to do that. What tweet finally got the attention of Mark Garneau, you might be asking? It was a shocking, atrocious tweet. We'll get there. Let me see. I'm bringing this up here. Do we see this? Let me see what, what we see. There we go. That's, that's, that's the one. Yes, that's the one. That's the one that got his horrible, horrible. Look at this tweet. This was in the context of um, Trudeau on Parliament Hill, apparently having issued a directive to the police or there was a directive issued to the police. I don't know whose directive it was that obscene flags and obscene messages would not be allowed on Parliament Hill. This was in the context of the crushing suppression of the most peaceful protest I would dare say the world has ever seen. Okay. Where they were banning flags that were obscene, messages that were obscene, and those messages apparently included the flag that said F with a maple leaf CK Trudeau. So in the context of that, I wrote, and it depends on how you read this, Everyone hates Justin Trudeau, even Mark Garneau. And Trudeau's response is going to be to ban all signs demonstrating that everyone hates Justin Trudeau because they are obscene and offensive. Now, this is why the joke works, in my humble opinion. First of all, you have to read this like a joke. Um, I don't know how else you could read this. The joke works for one of two reasons. Either Mark Garneau does, in fact, hate Justin Trudeau, uh, in which case it's funny because it's true, or he doesn't actually hate Justin Trudeau. And who the heck can even come to that determination of fact on a matter of opinion, conjecture, hypothesis? It's either true or it's not true. And if it's true, it's funny because it's true. And if it's not true, it's funny because of the absurdity of the statement that everybody hates Justin Trudeau, even members of the Liberal Party. Uh, and I only, you know, I picked on Mark Garneau because we have political history together. Um, and by the way, I, I happen to personally believe that Mark Garneau does, in fact, vehemently hate Justin Trudeau. During the federal election, we had a debate in Victoria Hall in Westmount. And um, at one point, I only share public information, people. I'm not a I'm, I'm a vault when it comes to stuff that I even know about people who might deserve to be publicly shamed. But regardless, uh, during the debate. Someone had asked Garneau a question, specifically, I forget on what aspect of Trudeau hypocrisy. I don't remember if it was about clean water with the indigenous. I don't remember if it was about ethics breaches, but it was basically, Justin Trudeau is effectively a, 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 an unethical, corrupt hypocrite. What do you have to say about that? And Garneau's response was not a vigorous defense of Justin Trudeau's integrity, because that's impossible. His response was two words, no comment. From that, I decipher and I conclude that Mark Garneau truly does not like Justin Trudeau. And I also decipher that Justin Trudeau, I don't think, likes Mark Garneau. Because after Mark Garneau got reelected in a landslide victory, Garneau, as far as I know, he's an astronaut. He's led a, a life of integrity as far as I know. I know people who know him. We have mutual connections. As far as I know of Mark Garneau as a human, he's a nice man. He's a good father. He's a good grandfather. Uh, I don't know if he's, you know, I don't know any bad things personally about Mark Garneau. Uh, and so with that said, he gets reelected in a landslide in Westmount. What does Justin Trudeau? Shuffles him right out of his position of Minister of Foreign Affairs. And apparently there's rumors that he's going to get an ambassadorship to France as if that's anything that a man of, of Garneau's position in life wants right now. To, to travel around the world, go to France, be away from family, kids, and grandkids. So I have a feeling there's something of a mutual disdain for one another. But setting all of that aside, this was my atrocious tweet. I didn't even notice Mark Garneau responded to it until I saw his response. This is atrocious. Two at the Viva Fry. What gave you the right to put my name in this tweet with a totally false statement? Remove it immediately. Hashtag pretty disgusting. So needs to work on his hashtag game, but atrocious. What gave you the right to put my name in this tweet with a totally false statement to which I immediately thought, me thinks he doth protest a little too much. And 
What gave me the right to dare mock Supreme Leader Justin Trudeau and dare mock by inclusion, Mark Garneau? What gave me the right? This response, so two things. Part of me wants to believe that this is also a sarcastic response. This is atrocious, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. To David, what gave you the right to get, to put my name in this totally false statement? Part of me reads it like that. And then part of me reads it like, this is a serious tweet. And it's the first response ever. Forget, forget Afghanistan. Forget confirming how many Canadians are left in Afghanistan. Forget, forget the political stuff. Forget responding to Justin Trudeau's ever increasing list of abject failures as a prime minister. This is the this is the tweet that pushed Garno over the edge if it was a bona fide response. To which I responded, my goodness, Mark Garno, the fact that you didn't read this as a lighthearted joke, it what let me read let me read my stuff properly. My goodness, Mark Garno, the fact that you didn't read this as the lighthearted joke it was is telling. Also, methinks thou you doth protesteth too much. Also, what gave me the right? to put your name in a joke tweet, that gosh darn charter of rights, that little pesky thing that says you have the freedom of expression. So that was the, uh, that was the political drama of Canada for the week. But I mean, I, I still can't figure out if it was serious or not. Uh, but one thing for certain, it's funny. If it was serious, that after all of the politics, that's the tweet that pushed Garner over the edge. Atrocious. That tre- tweet was atrocious. Everyone hates Justin Trudeau. First of all, I have not met one person campaigning within politics, within a friendship circle on the internet that actually likes Justin Trudeau. And the flip side is, if that statement is in fact false and Mark Garneau does not hate Justin Trudeau, that might be even worse than actually hating Justin Trudeau because he is truly detestable. He has absolutely failed Canada and beyond failing. It's it's one thing to be a failure. It's another thing to be an abject destroyer of the fundamental principles that made Canada great. Okay, rant over people. Let's go to some super chats. Do you have any hopeful news to share? World events and economic success are, world events and economics are successive black pills. We need a light at the end of the tunnel. I have no good answer for that super chat, not a band account. This too shall pass. 